the students welcome back this is the third part of video tutorial on standard 9 geography chapter 14 atmospheric pressure and winds in this video we will be talking about periodic winds local winds and variable winds so let's start let's start with periodic winds as you can see very well here periodic winds blow during specific periods of time or during specific seasons these winds generally blow in fixed locations. Their locations are fixed where they blow during a particular period of time or during a particular season. There are two types of periodic winds that we will be studying today. First set of periodic winds is land and sea breeze. So we will have a look at what are land breezes and sea breezes. This is the situation during the day. Uh, you know very well that land heats up faster than water. So over the day time, uh, low pressure develops over land, whereas there is high pressure over the sea or the ocean near the coast. Due to this, winds blow from sea to land. As they approach the land, they get warmed up and they rise up. After rising up, they cool and they travel back towards the sea. This wind is known as sea breeze. Now sea breeze, when it rises up over land, it uh, travels back to the sea and sinks down creating a cycle. This keeps the temperatures in the coastal areas warm during the night and cool during the day. During the night, the water cools slowly than land, so land will be very cold and water will be warm, so there will be low pressure over water during the night as as a result of this uh, the winds that will blow will blow from land towards the sea these winds will be moving towards the sea from the land and uh, as soon as it reaches the sea it gets warmed up and rises up again once it rises up it will cool down and uh, move back towards the land completing the circulation cell near the coast this wind will be known as the land breezes. These land breezes do not allow temperatures to decrease too much during the night. Okay, land breeze keeps the coastal areas warm during the night. The next periodic wind are the monsoon winds as you can see in the picture. During the month of July when it is summer in the northern hemisphere, there is low pressure over land and high pressure over oceans so winds blow from sea to land during the summer these monsoon winds are known as southwest monsoon winds because they come from the southwest during winter that is in the month of january uh, in the northern hemisphere the land cools very fast so there is high pressure over land and low pressure over oceans so winds will move from land to sea the direction would be northeast to southwest these winds are known as northeast monsoon winds so these winds blow seasonally they are seasonal winds and they have a profound impact which you will be studying in standard 10 later on so monsoon winds variable winds are those winds which uh, vary in speeds and direction means they can be very fast they can be moderate they can move from any direction they can move towards any direction it varies that's why variable winds these variable winds are generally affected by local conditions of temperature variable winds include cyclones and anticyclones which we will be studying in subsequent slides cyclones are type of variable winds as you can see in the picture towards the right these cyclones occur whenever there is a low pressure system in the center as denoted by L in the picture. This area of low pressure is surrounded by high pressure so winds move in to the low pressure system areas. These cyclones are known as hurricanes in uh, North America, cyclones in India, typhoons in uh, Japan and China that is in the West Pacific Ocean. Cyclones move anti-clockwise in the northern hemisphere because you know all winds are deflected towards their right in the northern hemisphere. So they move anti-clockwise in the northern hemisphere. 
Cyclones move clockwise in the southern hemisphere as you can see here because all winds are deflected towards the left due to Coriolis force. So these winds are deflected due to Coriolis force. Wherever there are cyclones, areas would experience cloudy weather and very stormy weather with heavy rainfall. We might have known about so many cyclones that have struck India, the eastern coast and western coast during the last 2-3 months. As the name suggests, anti-cyclones are regions of high pressure in the surface of the earth and this high pressure system is surrounded by low pressure on all sides. As you can see here, winds are moving out of the high pressure regions in both the hemispheres. So winds diverge from the center of the high pressure system. Anticlockwise, anticyclones, they move clockwise in the northern hemisphere as winds are deflected towards their right. And they move anticlockwise direction in southern hemisphere as winds are deflected towards the left. Because winds are moving out of this system, they will blow away all the clouds that are there in the atmosphere, creating clear skies and fair weather. The weather is calm and fair. Now we would look at another type of wind, which are local winds. As you can see in the picture, these winds blow over a particular region during different times or they may blow permanently throughout the year in those particular areas only. These winds create a profound impact on the climate of that region which in turn affects the life of people who live in that area. So these winds are local winds confined to a local area. Let's look at some of the local winds that are there as part of your syllabus. As you can see here, the first type of wind is Chinook. As you will be able to notice that Chinook wind blows on the leeward side of the Rocky Mountains into the plains of North America. Because these winds come from the coast, they are uplifted uh, along the Rocky Mountains and when they move into the leeward area, that is they slide down from the mountains, they get warmed up and in that process they melt the snow on the leeward slopes of the Rockies. That's why these winds are also known as snow eater. These two winds which are in Europe, they are the Mistral and the Fon. Now the Mistral wind is a south flowing wind from the Alps towards the Mediterranean Sea. As it comes down from the Alps, it uh, cools up the temperatures of the places which are near the Mediterranean Sea, especially in uh, Spain. Fon on the other hand is a northerly wind. It blows from the Alp Mount, Alps mountains towards the North Sea, that is towards the poles. As such, these winds are very cold winds because they move down towards the North Sea part, that is the northern part of Europe. The fourth local wind is Lu, as shown by the red arrow. These are hot, dry and dusty winds that blow in the northern plains of India during summer. These winds are very dry and they may cause sunstrokes which is very common in the northern plains in summer. So there are four local winds, Chinook, Mistral, Phone and Lu. Jet streams are special winds which are found on the surface of the earth. There are three main types of jet streams. We will talk about the first one, the subtropical jet stream. As you can see in this picture, there is a huge difference between the temperatures in the torrid zone as well as in the temperate zone and the polar zone. And because of this and the earth's rotation, we have seen that there are so many uh, global air circulation cells. The two cells on either side of the equator are the Headley cells where the air is mostly warm along the surface. On the sides of the Headley cell, you have the Peril cell where most of the winds blowing out of this are warmer winds but not too warm and then you have the polar cell where the winds that blow along the surface are really very very cold. Jet streams are found in the junction of any two such cells like this between 
the Hedley cell and the Ferrell cell. Here warm and cold air mass converge. So from here the subtropical jet stream blows out and uh, in the northern hemisphere the winds are deflected towards the right. So these jets are westerly jets whereas in the southern hemisphere these are deflected towards their left. These jet streams are very fast blowing winds which blow in the upper atmosphere at uh, speeds up to 200 kilometers per year. The jet stream that blows on the earth's surface is located between 45 and 65 degrees north and south latitudes. As you can see here, um, the polar front on both the hemispheres, uh, warm westerlies and cold polar easterlies meet and uh, then these winds rise upwards. So in this area, the jet streams blow out of the confluence of these two rising air masses and uh, these jet streams are also westerlies in both the hemispheres and these jet streams are not like the subtropical jet stream as uh, you can see here the jet streams move in a zigzag manner because the deflection by Coriolis force will be more in this area so the winds will not blow straight in fact they will curve around the surface of the earth so these are the polar jet streams third jet stream is the tropical easterly jet stream as you can see here the ITCZ that is the intertropical convergence zone it shifts northwards during the summer months so currently it is shown over South Asia and uh, because it is summer in the northern hemisphere the land is heated much more than water so the land is warm and the sea that is the Arabian Sea and the Bay of Bengal they are cooler so the sea is cool this is the only place in the world where a jet stream moves out of this region as this region becomes the convergence point of the northeast trades and southeast trades. Now these easterly jets they move from east to west in the northern hemisphere and uh, they whenever they blow they affect the most important phenomenon in India that is the monsoons and they are responsible for bringing the monsoons over India and even pushing the monsoons to areas where they normally do not reach the monsoon winds. So these are the three jet streams. I hope you are liking my videos. I hope they are helping you understand the concepts well. Thanks for watching. Next tutorial will be on chapter 15 humidity. So see you till then. This is Jaydeep Mehta.